It's Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. Um, I try to keep in mind that at this particular anchor point in the future from where my life frame, the shape that this area in New York has taken, um, at this point, there could be in my media, in my social media, that the FTC or FCC has allowed, the Federation has allowed, whatever the Federation, um, I see that they chose Father November, Father June, and then there's a Father October. I did not choose this Zodiac. They were chosen for me and the rest of the service area by some form of governance or party or governing body. So being that there's a father, I know that there's three men and a baby, movie reference with the baby in the carrier. Then they have some, um, whichever. But knowing that there's three men with one baby girl in this movie, and then knowing also in respectful terms that my local media company also alerts me that these three theoretical fathers have a business partner. Also very respectful. I just do not know his birthday or his Zodiac um, in keeping respect in where it is at the moment. So with that being said, I'm watching the elections a little differently I see they've made reference to take back the house with three stars. Um, I've seen how some of the earthlings will call them in this system of the us or the US have voted in this United States of America. I then hear things like Powerball last time, the jackpot, the Powerball jackpot just got to the highest ever, which is $2 billion. Um, And the last time the numbers actually were announced was August 3rd, which of course is my birth date arrival in Zodiac, which links these, this father, and it can't be my own internal house father for bylaws or by whatever, because I know he's January. So um, there are these, like if Pearl gets in a jam, which actually was a urban song for how do you put rumors out into the field of entertain entertainers, but to keep rumors and to keep in line with sense of reality and a job that still needs to get done, even though everybody looks like they're having so much fun. So with that in mind, um, and there being a union, but I don't really know how these things actually work um, or how the humans participate in them, the earthlings, I mean, the ear things, things that have ears. Um, so I'm seeing today, I'm watching some of the headlines um, on my New York team. It looks or for sports that I don't watch, but I will watch. I think his name is Brian... I don't want to butcher his last name. I, I really, I can't remember it. And it doesn't have it up on the screen at the moment. I just know his first name is Brian, um, which I just learned. And it also, one of the other teams has a coach that looks very similar. I, 
I really had to pause it and then go back to look at the bottom. I And I don't know if that it's, I don't know. They, they showed it the other night and I can't remember what his name is. I think is he a Douglas. Cause that made sense with Douglas Bremen. But anyhow, so I'm watching this and it says uh, Hackensack Meridian Health and it's Quest Diagnostics and Training Center. And it says New York and he's got the Nike mark and giants and he's wearing black. Um, now if New York over the last four decades got confused as to who Pearl is, I am the painting of the girl with the pearl earring that should not get confusing. However, if somebody tried to swap out babies inside a carrier, this could get confusing along the way if certain people are making elections and then wanting certain people and children to get in certain places and not wanting to listen to what father needs in there's three fathers and then there's a business partner. And in our local media on channel two and on channel seven, there is a presidential expectation of who they already announced are the participants and that's it. There's other more serious things that could put us in danger if they are not acknowledged with respect. So I respect them. I acknowledge them for what has been allowed into the, through this portal, through this window and chosen by some agreement, I would assume, I didn't, don't think that they just, I mean, and they are consistently the president that represents here. And then there's the president that represents some international calling. And then there's a strategic business partner. It's just the way that I'm looking at it at the moment because I have restaurant issues. So I'm watching uh, Quest Diagnostics and brought this gentleman Brian from the Giants I did not know that they call the Giants G-men I am G under my mother's gunder so it spells G under um and I found that very interesting and then it goes into the Jets uh said something with the, it went from the Giants coach to the Jets coach, both of them having something to say. Um, and then I go from th there, Channel 7, Eyewitness News yesterday from 6 o'clock to the news today at noon, uh, which is tracking this hurricane. It started off as a subtropical storm. But I'm listening to the way that this man, Sam Champion, um, and I can't confirm he's a champion of, he's a weather person, um, which even that word, meteorology, I heard Lonnie Quinn calls himself a weather caster. Um, I thought that that was very interesting because he's very, um, but I believe he's on channel two. Um, so I'm listening to the words that they speak of for the storm that they're tracking, which hits um, the pan, they call Florida the panhandle. So I, it's gonna hit this there and then it's gonna get, and that's where Pearl Station is. So I heard in Once Upon a Time. And then it comes up the northeast coast, this storm, Nicole, that they're tracking at the moment. They also have a piece on Jensen's Beach, um, just for the kind of sort of, but not really, and what they're doing right now. For him, I feel bad for us. It's an unfortunate uh, thing that happened. Turns out that's a teaching point for one Robert Sala, whose Jets now head into the bye week after that big win over Buffalo. The head again, I don't normally listen to their sports, um, 
but this bye week reminded me of the HOA and bylaws for which in New York, I don't have any of those. They don't, like, again, there's no, like, like it, when Pulte built or Hampton Park got built, there was an HOA, there was a directory, there was a welcome wagon, there were women that came out and handed out, gla like, frosted glasses. It was welcome to the neighborhood. Here's our bylaws. Welcome to the HOA. We are now, like, your... You know, if you want to enjoy time with us, we are love to spend time with you. Here's a list of all the calendar events in the neighborhood. I mean, like, it was amazing. And it felt real, and it felt like the, the family outside of your home. New York, where I am in Queens, does not operate in that manner. I have no idea why. Not to, but it is just a different, almost different animal, different beast, different animal, different psychology. So I don't want the women that I knew in Virginia to get confused about how New York is working at the moment and what in my local area, in case this falls into hands elsewhere or helping hands or caring hands, I don't know. But if it stays local, it's one set of circumstances. If they needed to know something from people who knew me when Alexander was conceived and how I was while I was there, when I was there by myself um, and respectable, then that was for the limited time that I was allowed to live down there before then they brought me back to New York and here I have been. The head coach says his team will not make the same mistake as McKinney and the Giants. It's not a week off. It's a week to take care of yourself, not to, to get away from the physical aspect where you're beating up your body. I've seen players that, you know, we talked about it today, that uh, went to a bye week and absolutely destroyed their entire season because they went to a beach and drank beer and ate nachos for an entire week and uh, came back 10, more, 10 pounds heavier and destroyed their entire back half of the season. That sounds like an election night party in the weather office. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> An election in the weather office. Yeah, real cute, guys. Seriously. I don't want to hear about spring break and what they caught, whatever, if that's what that conversation was about from, like, the models in, like, the... If they all died tomorrow, the only one who would be upset is whatever restaurant here is holding on to them. So, um, that sounds like a restaurant... And a recipe for disaster kind of a conversation. So, like, I don't know why that's being held. But I know it goes on in the excuses that the pathetic use in order to move things in all sorts of disastrous ways. I mean, I'm talking three men, one baby girl, the only girl that they're ever going to care about for this three men, one baby, and then a strategic business partner. And the level of excuses with... 10 pounds, beer, whatever, not going to happen. Not for where we are at with health violations, neglect, and for lack of a better term, I mean, they're not even snacks. They're just not. I mean, two pieces of paper and neither one even qualify for snacks. They just don't. The main restaurant that was opened there were plates set, there were meetings had, and then it's like they just ignored that formal happy introduction. And then they went with something that I call a crazy donkey because I don't have any other words for it. That's where it was. And then it went into something called a blacksmith. That by itself speaks volumes. But neither of them qualify as far as I'm concerned for snack time. So now here's them speaking about this tracking storm, Nicole. We'll be watching that very heavy rain. And when we come back in just a minute, we're going to take you hour by hour with that rainfall, that ball of rain that is wrapped around Nicole, where it travels the southeast and how. Now they mentioned Powerball the other night, highest jackpot ever. Now they're talking about the rain around Nicole. And I'm tracking this story straight through close and how much rain it gets to us. David Shirley. 
Thank you for that, Sam. And the winds from Nicole are starting to churn up the waves on the coast of Florida. As Sam has been saying, more people being evacuated from vulnerable locations as that storm approaches. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Eindiger is live in Jensen Beach, Florida, where those winds are strong right now, Josh. Yeah, surely the winds are strong, and actually as we speak, we're getting a little feeder band, so there's some water on that camera. Just uh, look down there, you can see the winds have really picked up. It's nothing remotely close to hurricane strength, certainly not yet. We're still hours away from landfall. And this is an area in Jensen Beach, just north of Palm Beach County, uh, where we're likely to see the worst effects of the storm in terms of wind as you look down this way. But as you can see, there are pretty thick dunes here that separate uh, land, uh, or buildings, I should say, from the water. Elsewhere, actually farther north up the coast, they're already suffering from serious erosion from Hurricane Ian, and tonight is not going to be pretty. More than 100 miles north of where Nicole will likely make landfall, and with the storm still far out to sea, Florida's Atlantic coast is already taking... Now this is interesting. It says public restrooms, and what I also, in Tivoli, and Yavol in Tivoglio is Tivoglio is what my grandfather used to say. Tivoglio bene. Uh, they chose Voliusia, Vol Voliusia County in Florida as their sunshine. Again, I just find the symbols absolutely amazing. Taking a beating with buildings and a parking lot sinking into the ocean in Daytona Beach shores as up and down the coast an already storm ravaged state gets ready for round two. South Florida communities like Boynton Beach are already seeing street flooding well in advance of the storm. This is high tide here in Jensen Beach, Florida, and I'm on the mainland. This is the intracoastal waterway, and you can see how it is already overflowing its banks and washing out this road uh, right here. The storm is still more than 100 miles away, and it won't actually hit this area until much later tonight. The combined winds and storm surge will contribute to continued beach erosion in areas that have already seen erosion from Hurricane Ian. Fresh off his re-election win last night, Governor Ron DeSantis today warned Floridians not to take this storm lightly. It is expected to strengthen at least to a Category 1 hurricane by the time it makes landfall tonight not far from Palm Beach. As of this morning, 16,000 power crews had all... Now, I don't know. Uh, I heard they were looking for a red wave. Again, whatever it is, it is. I did my red wave. However, I did my red wave. Um, and then the state of New York did whatever they did. I heard some of the rumors of what they're saying between do you concede, do you not concede? Again, there's a lot of conversation, but there's a lot going on outside and around this whatever as well. Janvier or January is one set of circumstances, but there are three men and a baby with one baby and a baby carrier and then a business partner um, that the news has a very specific set of characters for this very specific area of war theater. Um, and thespian level respect is usually expected at that level. Um, in some of my other whatever, but um, it's somewhere in the back of my mind at the moment already staged to work on restoring power as soon as the storm passes. And while it's nowhere near as strong as Hurricane Ian, which killed 130 people when it pummeled the state in September, emergency management officials say Nicole won't do anyone any favors as they work to rebuild. This incoming storm is a direct threat to both property and life. A limb category hurricane or even a tropical storm will cause more damage than usual due to the weakened infrastructure we have. If you are impacted with flooding from Hurricane Ian, then you can expect to be impacted by this upcoming storm as well. 
second back five, you're looking at a couple of guys down there who are employees of the hotel where we're standing, and they're right now blocking off these uh, these boardwalks, basically where we're standing, from anyone from going any farther onto the beach because it's going to get, and it already is, as you can tell, in that water, extraordinarily dangerous uh, out there in the surf. We'll, of course, keep monitoring the situation from here as this storm gets closer. We're live in Jensen Beach, Florida, this afternoon. Josh Eidinger, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Josh, thanks so much for that. And stay with Eyewitness News and ABC 7 NY as we track Nicole. Look for more live reports from Josh later today on Eyewitness News. Now to vote 2022, and we are... It has not lost its symbolic um, mention that uh, currently in multiple stations at multiple times, I've heard that the weather department is tracking Nicole. It's a storm. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth, solar system, Milky Way, universe, galaxy is broken. And it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, phone 1361. 